Since throwaway plastics were introduced to the consumer in the 1940s, the multi-purpose material has become an ideal food and beverage packaging product. 78 million metric tons of plastic packaging are produced globally each year, but only 14% of that is recycled. I'm here at Nestlé's Institute of Packaging Sciences to find out a bit about the pledges they've made to reduce plastic in their packaging and increase recycling. In 2018, Nestlé produced 1.7 million metric tons of plastic and the company has been a target of protest action. But by 2025, it's committed to 100% of its products being recyclable or reusable and to reduce the use of virgin plastics by a third. The labs here in Lausanne are a key part of that commitment. Hi, I'm Veronique. Hi, I'm Anna. Welcome. Veronique Cremades Matisse is Nestlé's global head of sustainable packaging. And this year, the company pledged 1.68 billion euros to its sustainable packaging programme. As part of a three pronged strategy, Nestlé is firstly looking at trying to simplify the material itself. When you see a, a small sort of a soft plastic, you think it's just one layer, but actually often you have many layers and the more layers, the more complexity and the unlikely it will be easy to recycle. Isn't one of the reasons that plastic is so ubiquitous, the fact that it's cheaper? When we say we want to create a market for recycled plastic that are food grade and we are willing to pay a premium, we pledge for system change. But yes, it's more expensive. As well as creating material that's easier to recycle, Nestlé is also exploring different recycling techniques. But the third part of its strategy presents a significant challenge, changing the customer mindset. You can have the right material that is completely designed to be recycled, but if the consumer doesn't dispose in the right waste stream, then the work we've done has no value. There are companies finding ways to engage with the consumer. In London and California, Cup Club, started in 2018 by Sophia Qureshi, has introduced washable takeaway cups for businesses. The materials that we opted in for were 100% recyclable plastics. It's lightweight, it's, it's very durable, it's easy to make. It behaves very well with hot temperatures when it comes to carrying food and beverage. It almost mimics the experience of what people are currently using with single use. Cup Club offers businesses sustainable drink cups, which it collects at the end of each day, washes and returns, to be used hundreds of times. The idea is that we, we design for multi-use, so that's minimum 250 uses. They can actually go beyond that. When you compare our product to single-use products, we break even at 66. About two, three weeks ago, we completed 400,000 orders, and that has been an aggregate amount of about 11,000 kg of CO2 saved, and just under 7,000 kg of total waste. Meanwhile, Scottish firm Vegware has been named as that country's fastest growing export company, selling sustainable, recyclable, compostable products for food and drink. The materials we use are plant-based, so everything we have is suitable for industrial composting in under 12 weeks. In practice, it's actually often quicker. The company now has distributors in 70 countries around the world. Its packaging is more expensive than expanded polystyrene, but turnover has grown rapidly from £20 million two years ago. In terms of turnover, we have doubled in size, or more than doubled in the last two years. But a key impediment to growth that Vegware and many of these product-based companies face is ensuring there are appropriate waste facilities available to compost and recycle their materials. It's always chicken and egg. You have to have a significant volume of a material around in order for waste processors to be interested in actually dealing with it. So that's where we are now with plant-based compostable materials that we're dealing with. There's no reason why it can't happen. All it takes is investment, uh, willingness, favourable policies and of course a bit of time. The Ellen MacArthur Foundation has estimated that there would be more plastic than fish in the oceans by 2050 if companies continued as normal. These three firms are all investing in innovation to combat the problem. But ingrained business practices, customer habits and the availability of cheaper plastic products mean the scale of the challenge shouldn't be underestimated. <laughs>